always see ourselves the way we do. Culture often dictates that our worth, path, and identity are determined by our race, our gender, the things we've done, and the things that have been done to us. Projections of the lives of others and the state of our world saturate our news feeds, making it difficult to distinguish the real from the highlight reel. I'm Natalie Manuel Lee, and in this series, I'll be digging beneath the surface to uncover what it really means to be bold, transparent, and confront our shame. In this season, I'll be speaking with people at the top of their industry, from the realms of music, radio, politics, television, and philosophy, to find out how they navigate shame and translate their hardships into opportunities to refine themselves instead of define themselves. So, how do we rise above challenges to truly operate in our purpose and identity? They say the only constant in life is change. Our circumstances alter over time, and so do we as people. I'm exploring the concept of evolution and what it looks like to grow and adapt in a healthy way. How can one overcome discouragement to heal instead of continue hurting? What are the keys to maintaining our true essence and prevailing over shame in times when we find our status shifting? And how can we hold on to our hopes, dreams, and happiness when things don't pan out the way we thought they would? In this episode, I traveled to Atlanta to meet with singer and actress Latoya Luckett. Starting out at a young age as an early member of one of the most iconic groups of our time, Destiny's Child, Latoya went on to become a solo artist, actress, and reality TV personality, as well as becoming a mother. Her multifaceted career, which has stood the test of time, made me curious about how she's evolved both personally and professionally. We are going to Latoya Luckett's house. We're gonna to talk to her about, you know, how she deals with disappointments, how she transitioned out of Destiny's Child, what that season was like, what those obstacles were. She's awesome, she's a deep, deep well, but more importantly, she's very transparent. And I think she does that because she understands that her life is just an example. Hi. You started singing at a young age. Was it always your passion? Yes, it was. Um, I remember <laughs> my first solo, uh, I was around, around the age of five. The leader of the children's choir knew that I wanted to sing, but she didn't know I wanted to be a soloist. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so one Sunday she put me on the spot and uh, literally just handed me the mic and was like, come on, it's your time. And so I sang my first solo in church and that day changed everything. 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 You were part of the group Destiny's Child who had massive success. How do you not allow the perceptions of others in that moment to define you? That wasn't easy. And mm -hmm. I think because we were so young, I'm so glad that we had great leadership and our, our parents were there and very hands-on and very in our face about, hey, we know you have a gift and you now have this awesome platform to share your gift, but don't forget who you are and whose you are. You know what I mean? Who you belong to, which is God. You know what I mean? And they didn't even allow people to blow us up and allow us to feel ourselves. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It was like, no, no, no. They're like, stay humble. Exactly. And I'm so glad they did that. In late 1999, shortly after recording their second album, which would go platinum eight times over, Latoya and fellow Destiny's Child member Latavia Robertson were shocked to find themselves dropped from the group after a dispute with management. What was that season like for you? Oh, heavy. It was heavy for several reasons. Destiny's Child was all that I knew. You know, uh, I got in the group when I was 12 years old. And I remember when everything went down, I was actually here in Atlanta. Um, Latavia and I, we ended up finding out, you know, that everything kind of happened through watching the Say My Name video and seeing that we weren't in the video. <laughs> And it, you know, listen, it's so long ago, but it, it still stings at time, times when you think about it. But I remember being here and going, okay, 
what's next? But honestly, I didn't have the confidence to sing. I didn't want to sing anymore. I didn't feel like I had a voice. And then they continued, of course, to rise. Um, and we just had to take a seat and watch, mm. you know? Um, immediately, folks wanted to put us in the studio, but I was in a not so healthy relationship, had just gone through a very devastating, traumatic moment in my life and in my career. I was not stable at all. Do you feel like you had to rebuild because of the oh, trauma yeah. that you oh, went through? Oh God, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was traumatic. Mm -hmm. It was all that I knew. We didn't have really any outside life outside of Destiny Child. We were rehearsing, if we weren't rehearsing, we were on the road, we were performing. We lived together. We were friends, we were sisters, we were, you know, workmates, we, everything. We were each other's everything. Yeah. So when that got taken away, my world changed. I didn't know anything outside of that. I didn't know my own voice outside of that. And you know, being a team player um, and just knowing that I needed to carry my note, which I was the soprano of the group, that's all that I knew. Mm -hmm. So when you just drop that off in the middle of nowhere, it's kind of like, where, what's next? Disappointments can shock and shame us. It's difficult when our identity and our path are radically shaken by circumstances beyond our control. When the ramifications are real, how does one adapt both internally and externally? How do you deal with disappointments? It's not easy, um, especially being an actress. We get no's every day. <laughs> how do you deal with those Baby. no's? Oh my God. Gosh, you know, it stings and they say, leave everything in the room, you know, know that you've given your best and leave it in the room. How? When you got bills, how? When you feel like you have done your best and it's still not enough, you still get the no, maybe because you were too tall, too short, too light, too dark, too black, too this, too the. It's just a gut punch. It's it, but it's what you do with the gut punch. You know what I mean? Like that no might hurt. That no is gonna hurt. A lot of my no's have hurt. Do you feel like those no's define you? They've helped to define me. I feel like, you know, what happened with Destiny's Child was a no. What happened with my parents was a no. They got divorced. You know, it, 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 I think that those big, ooh, turns in my life um, helped me to be a stronger woman because I'm still standing after both of those huge traumatic situations that were very public. Um, I take a no on the chin a lot better than I would had I not gone through those, those very detrimental, hurtful situations. Yeah, with those detrimental, hurtful situations, how do you stay content? Does your perspective shift? Does it not? It does. I think that you start to put things in perspective. I think that you start to value things a lot different. Time, your health, the fact that, okay, maybe this didn't happen, but I don't have, I'm not on the street begging for food. You know what I mean? I have clean clothes that I put on my back every day. I'm able to wake up and kiss my mom. I'm able to, you know, I'm in good health. I have all of these things going for me and I'm still standing and I have a testimony. It helps me when I'm able to go and share with a young lady that I see might be going through something I've been through before, but I can show her, look, this is what's on the other side. Mm -hmm. There's still light at the end of the tunnel. And because I've had that similar experience, I'm able to kind of help her through that situation and let her know, hey, God did not let go of my hand through that. And he's not gonna, he's not gonna let go of yours. It's a challenging and encouraging thought that while the shame of a no doesn't have to define you, the strength of overcoming it can. Allowing yourself to feel pain can be an empowering and important part of the process. To be shaped but not permanently wounded by pain is a beautiful evolution. Latoya's sense of hope and vulnerability inspires me, and I wondered how she viewed the role of vulnerability in her life. Do you think in order to be an excellent <clears throat> artist, you have to be vulnerable? Yes. Only good can come out of your truth, even when it sucks. You know what I mean? But getting it out, there's a relief. 
that I feel when I'm in the booth and I'm singing about something that I've really gone through that's been heavy on my heart. It's almost like a release. And I feel that, you know, because I've been through certain situations and music was the only thing that helped me through. There were certain songs, whether it be worship music, whether it be sad love songs. Why do we listen to sad love songs when we're going through breakups? Doesn't it make you think? I feel like it that? comforts you. Right. So I made a lot of those comforting records, you know what I mean? But worship music definitely like got me, of course, on my face in a puddle of tears. But at the same time, I felt a release, a relief afterwards. Mm -hmm. I needed that cry. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. When I've been too hard to say I'm not okay, and then that one song come on, it just melts you. Mm -hmm. I think that, you know, that's why I keep getting back in the booth and making those records that are just honest. Why do you think that people don't want to confront their past or want to confront the root of whatever it is that needs to be healed? Nobody wants to feel hurt. Nobody wants to feel those real feelings. Everybody wants to feel good. Especially in, in today's world, everything is about good, quick feelings right now. I want to feel good right now at all times. I will take this to make me feel good. I will drink this to make me good. I will sleep with this to make me feel good right now. And we're overlooking the simplest, most beautiful moments in our life trying to fulfill whatever this now moment of happiness in this very moment is. We're, we're overlooking things. Or, even with social media, it's like you just can't be happy in your life. You have to be distracted by everyone else's path. And if their path and what they have going on looks better than what you've got, then you're not happy with what God has given you. It's not enough. And then we start to feel like we're not enough. I'm not pretty enough. I'm not skinny enough. I'm not smart enough. I'm, I'm not rich enough. I'm not do you deal with that? Uh, there are moments where I go, I think I've worked a lot harder than that person and they got, what? okay. But that wasn't for you if that didn't and God ain't had it for you right now. So you got to go and just sit on back and be okay with it. But how are you really okay with You're it? You're not. It's tough. But sometimes that's why you need to just log off then. Log off. If you are, if those jealous feelings are gonna come up or you're gonna start to start to feel a way about you and look at you different because it's not happening for you, then you might need to log off. Mm -hmm. What do you feel like when we get the thing that we put on the pedestal? How do we not allow that thing to heighten our value in the way we see ourselves? See, the problem is we've always put things on pedestals and we put so much value in that thing and we're good for the chase. Like we're going, and once we conquer it and it's done, half the time it's not even what you thought it was, one. Two, you've done this and you've put it before God and then God will show you nothing comes before me. And then you're disappointed and now you look for something else. How do you deal with that disappointment? It does heal itself with time, but if you try and figure it out on your own, you will drive yourself crazy. So I feel like the sitting back, taking a beat, sending a prayer up, getting whatever that is off my chest, and then sometimes I'll, with sending that prayer up, have to walk away from it and say, hey, he might not answer that prayer today, tomorrow, next week, next month, or this year. So now I gotta pray for God's timing with patience. He might have already answered it. Or he might, and you don't like that answer. That ain't what you're looking for. I believe comparison and instant gratification are some of the most dangerous downfalls of our generation. And while we all have goals and dreams, if seeing them fulfilled becomes our cornerstone, then we'll never have a secure foundation to grow from. When faced with obstacles, it can be healthy to share our struggles. But at what point do we cross over from helpful transparency and enter into unhelpful negativity? Do you believe that there's freedom in verbalizing the obstacles in our life? Or should we stay away from that and not give life to it? You definitely have to communicate. There's definitely freedom in it. If you don't communicate things, then you're just 
holding stuff in. You're not expressing. That's when you birth unforgiveness. And that's like a disease that can turn into a cancer that can turn into so many different things by not freeing yourself and allowing yourself to communicate and express certain feelings. Now, I do believe it's a way to do it. I think that the way the delivery delivery is so important, mm -hmm. the way we communicate our feelings and, and a lot of that, you know, I had to work on through going to a therapist, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Because a lot of us, a lot of times don't even know how to exp properly express ourselves without offending someone. Yeah. It, a lot of times it comes out in anger. A lot of times it comes out in sadness, depression, all kind of stuff. At the end of the day, it still has to come out. You have to be freed of that stuff, but it's a way to go about doing it. Yeah. Why is it so hard for us to be vulnerable? I don't know. I think because we're still wanting to paint this picture that we're okay at all times. And that's not the truth. Nobody is. Nobody that is in their right mind can possibly be okay at all times. You have to have those moments where life gives you that gut punch and you gotta feel it. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's how you become stronger. That's how you build. That's how you, you know, can start to move and elevate. And, and that's when sometimes you, your relationship with God, that's when you guys get closer. That's when you're able to see him, when you're at your most weakest, vulnerable moments. When you can still see the light, when you can still feel the peace and you're not supposed to be feeling the peace. When you're at your saddest moment and God just gives you a glimpse of light and something even very small. When your little bitty prayer that you had is answered. There's so much power <clears throat> and vulnerability and you do that very well in your reality TV show. Mm -hmm. How? You know what? I think that, you know, with everything that I've been through, I know there are so many people that um, can relate to some of the situations that I've, you know, had to deal with in life. And why not be honest? How dare I not share my truth? I'm a new mom. And I got all these crazy emotions, these, you know, fears about becoming a new mom. It's a lot. How does shame not creep in, though? when you are being so vulnerable? I don't let it. Um, the reason why I don't allow shame or guilt or any negative thoughts to creep into my mind is because I go into everything that I do with good intentions. I am never there to hurt anybody intentionally. So even with you know me living my life out loud, any moment that you see on cam camera, I'm doing it out of love. I might not be right. It's not gonna be right all the time. But I also am a person that will go back and say, I'm sorry. I apologize in advance for not, I apologize to my daughter in advance for not getting it right. I was like, baby, I'm gonna mess up, okay? Mama not gonna get it right all the time. So I'm just letting you know before time. This is my first time around. You know what Give I mean? Give me some grace. Give, Give me, me some, some grace. I need some grace and mercy, okay? I need all that. So just understand, we gonna figure this out together. Seasons can come with both joys and challenges, and often it looks different to what we might have expected. If we're willing to embrace the unfolding evolution of ourselves, those around us, and our circumstance, we will find true satisfaction and be our best selves. But time doesn't necessarily heal all wounds. I was curious to understand if and how LaToya had left behind the shame of past disappointments like her sudden departure from Destiny's Child. Describe the healing that has gone on in your heart. I'm still healing. To say that I'm fully healed is a lie. It's a work in progress. I'm definitely still under construction, but I've made the decision, the choice to be happy. I've made the choice to not overwhelm myself. I've made the choice to not live in the hurt of those past hurts. I've made the choice to grow and be okay that every day is not going to be perfect. What's your process like <clears throat> in, in the healing? Of course you start with prayer, but it's also self-work. Going to sit down with someone, having the freedom to share, speak your mind, get some things off your chest, Time to be still, that's hard, especially as a mom. You don't get that. 
It is tough to find moments to yourself because you are so bogged down with making sure everyone's okay except for you. But I've tried to make it a point to just get still and breathe, even if it's for 30 seconds. It's a must. And some things will happen and I'll, it'll trigger something and I'll go, ooh, that hurt. That was still, that's still there. Exactly, so when you know it's still there, do you just keep digging? Yeah, you gotta, you gotta dig. Cause then you're like, okay, whoa, 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 whoa. You're still there, that means some other stuff might be there. Let's get to the root of that. We might need to go back to that. Do you see the value of it now? Oh, absolutely. I feel had things not have happened the way they did, um, that all of us wouldn't have found our own voice because we were so in that and wanting to be a team player and wanting just it to be Destiny's Child. That's it. It's the end all be all. And that's why I'm not bitter. Yeah. I'm, I'm not bitter. I never will be. I don't. I can't talk down on people. I'm like B's number one fan. I'm Kelly's number one fan. L's number one fan. Michelle's number one fan. Like I want everyone to be successful because I know so many girls who have a gift and will never have the platform to share it. And guess what? I got to do it yeah. with them for the time that I did. And I got to do it three solo albums later, you know what I'm saying? Being an actress now, like God has kept me. How do you see the future? I can hope it's gonna be bright. Mm -hmm. uh, I do know that I am gonna have to make some different decisions for myself in order to keep um, myself aligned. I'm gonna have to get rid of some of the junk and be able to have the freedom to be more vocal and expressive and, and, and allow myself to share even more than I already have, whether it be through song, whether it be through going to sit and talk to my therapist or talk to my husband or whatever it is, or have some of those hard conversations with the people that hurt us. Mm -hmm. I think that some of that is gonna have to happen for me to feel lighter. I'm excited about that freedom, honestly. I, I love getting things off my chest. And now that I'm learning how to communicate and learning how to share without necessarily doing it through anger or sadness um, and sharing with love, uh, I think that there's gonna be a better outcome. Yeah. What do you believe God has done with the pain in your life up until this point? It's given me a voice, my voice again. That pain gave me a voice again. I am who I am because of what I've been through and how I've dealt with it. I know God's love because of it. So uh, it's, it's, it's made me stronger. It's, it's given me, I now have a testimony to share with my daughter. And I want her to see how even with all of that, mommy kept going. That's good, thank you. Latoya touched on just like the pain and the hardship, how it helped her to find who she was. And honestly, that's the same experience that I've had with my pain and with my struggles and with the tough stuff is that it has helped me to find my voice. It has helped me to find, dig deep and find really who, who I am and to rebuild myself. Um, that's what she also touched on is that those seasons birth rebuilding and I couldn't agree more.